This is a Damage Drum Kit from Heaviosity. And it runs right here in Native Instruments Contact, either the full version of Contact or even the free Contact player. And this library will fit in with a wide range of musical genres, everything from your epic trailers to cinematic scores to even like a standard metal or death metal, industrial metal, and even some electronic genres. So it has a wide range of musical styles that you can use this in. After you buy it and you download it and install it, you'll find it right up here under Libraries and Contact. Expand the instruments and you'll have three different NKIs or three different sort of instruments or three different interfaces. So right now in this part, let's go through each of these three different interfaces so we can get an understanding of uh, how they work. And then we'll have some more sound samples. So if all you care about is the sound samples, you can just use the uh, chapters below and skip right ahead. But let's dive in here. And we're going to start with the Drum Ensemble Designer. Okay, so here we are in the Drum Ensemble Designer. Down here, you can see we have some colored keys, which denote the kind of sample that's loaded into each of our three banks here. So we have hi-hats, of course, toms here, some cymbals there, hi-hats, snares are yellow here, and then different kicks here in red. And again, these correspond to the samples loaded in each of our three banks. We can always change those out over here in the source page, which we'll get to in just a minute. But let's go to just this, uh, just this kick here. So we can see the key being triggered up here and the sample being played. Of course, as long as I have follow MIDI turned on, if I don't have follow MIDI turned on, you play something else, it's not going to update up here, okay? So you can always click to focus in on any certain uh, certain sample. So this is our stage. And with this, we can spread out our drum kit however we want in space. You can always turn this off or turn it on, of course. Let's go to a snare, for example, so we can see the snare playing right there. I can pull it over to either side. I can pull it way forward, very close, or push it way back in the room. Of course, do this with all of your samples. You can also do things like control click to uh, set them to the center. Over here, we can scale our depth, either pull everything back or pull everything forward or lock it into a certain, you know, a certain depth. All right. Then we have a drum and mix control right here. So let's go to the drum control. And this is a per sample control. So I can adjust the volume for each of our samples, the tune, the tone, more high end on that, less low end, for example. Then you also have your attack and the uh, release. Very fast release on that. Does it sound very good here? All right. But then go to the next sample. And I can have completely different uh, settings for this sample. Again, my kick pedal left there. This is the kick right pedal right there. The left pedal. All right, same thing for your, all of your uh, all of your snares, hi hats, and your toms. Over here, you have the mix settings. So this is like the microphones, the close microphone, the overheads the room, the hall, and the crush. You can turn any of these mics off just by clicking the orange button there. Go back to our kick, head back to drum. I'm gonna control click to set this stuff to the default. There we go. Same thing for this kick. Let's get that there. Very good. Come back to mix now. So I can pull the close mics down or the room mics down or room mics up whatever you want to get the perfect mix. Now on this mix tab, of course, this is going to affect every sample because of course, you know, this is the, uh, for the entire mix. So as I change through my samples, you can see that this is not changing at all on a per sample basis, all right? So again, drum is per sample, mix is for uh, the entire mix of everything of your entire kit, all right? So just adjust that however you want. All right, again, we have our three different banks right here. You can just click on the number. You can click on the individual slots and again, see exactly where that is panned on the, uh, on the stage here, if it's far, if it's close and see the exact name and the key that's triggering it. 
Let's move on to the source page now. So back here, we can load entire banks. Let me take this off of uh, favorites, Let's go to kicks there. So we can load entire banks or individual drums into each of our uh, three banks here. So right now on bank one, we have kicks and we also have some snares in there. Now if I come over here and I click, I can see exactly what is assigned to each, uh, to each slot here, as you can see. And whenever you click a sample, you can hear it, get a quick audition of that. As long as you have auto turned on down here, if I turn auto off, you click on something, you're not gonna automatically hear it. Instead, you'd have to come down here and click on your speaker, all right? Let's turn auto back on. If there's a sound that you really, really like, you can always favorite it right there. Then you'll see it in your favorites list right over here. Let's come back to our snares. We can use uh, our filters here. So maybe just uh, the snare two samples. So we have loaded here. Maybe I want that sample. Drop it right in there. Now we've loaded a different sample in that slot. So then you just go about doing this for all of your other banks, all of your other drums. Maybe the kick here, come up here. Maybe have the hyped there instead, et cetera, et cetera. Now we also have things in here like percussion and even reverses. Which makes for uh, you know some really nice transition sounds. Okay, you can also use these buttons right here if you want to go up or down and selecting your banks, or just of course manually select them. And you can see the bank updates right there as I uh, switch through these. Now again, we can load entire banks all at once if uh, we want to. So again, we have some snares and kicks in this bank. Let me come to the bank here and kick drum and then just grab the kicks i can load this entire bank across this uh, across all of these slots so now everything is a kick in here okay you also of course have plenty of presets or what's called snapshots here in contact just make sure that the camera icon is showing use your drop down we can load up an entire preset all right Let's move on to the settings page. So up here we have some global settings. So round robin, you'll probably want that on so you're not just playing a static, a single uh, single sample. Turn on that round robin, get some extra samples in there. Sounds more human that way, of course. And this is a global setting, not a per sample setting, okay? You can randomize that velocity if you want. Then you have your velocity curve, and this is generally for you know the way you play or the way your keyboard or drum pad is set up. So for example, well, let's do this first. Uh, in case you don't know, here in contact, if you play way down here on a key, if you click way down here on a key, that's a low velocity. Up here is a high velocity, all right? Low velocity, high velocity. So we can change our velocity curve to respond, you know, again, however your keyboard happens to be. But now when I play down here, which should be a low velocity because we changed our curve to, now there's basically no curve at all. Now, even down here, we're getting a high velocity and up here, also a high velocity. All right, so just adjust this to the way you play, to the way your keyboard is set up, or even to the way your MIDI is set up if you happen to be dragging in some, uh, some MIDI loops, all right? Then we also have an option to have MIDI velocity. Now, right now it's set to uh, CC1, which by default is, uh, is your mod wheel. So check this out here. I'll just play a key then pull up that mod wheel. Let me get a higher velocity. We can adjust that with our mod wheel if we want. Now you can always change the CC number for that. You know, CC1 probably works pretty well since again, it's the, uh, it's the mod wheel, but that's another way that you can control your velocity. It might be kind of cool to draw on some, you know, some automation for that modulation lane uh, to adjust your velocities like that if you want. Then you have voice cancel, which just reduces the polyphony. You can also see, again, as long as we have follow MIDI turned on here, right here we can see the note that was last triggered and the sample. Then over here we have our per drum controls, and this is the same thing that we have over here 
on the stage under the drum control, all right? So I'll come back to this kick. If I turn the volume down here, right? Head back to our settings. You can see that the volume right here is all the way down. Pull it all the way up, pull the tune all the way up, come back to uh, the stage. Again, volume up and the tune is up, all right? So these are mirrors of each other. They're just uh, you know spread across both pages. So that way you don't have to jump back and forth between both of these. So that's very good of heaviosity to do that. Makes things a lot faster whenever you're programming and uh, setting up your drum kit. All right, so same things here, your tone low, tone high. Don't need to go over that again. Now we have the performance section and this gets to be really, really cool. Let's go to this uh, sample right here. So right now performance is turned off. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And then we have options like repeat, roll, flam, swell, and crescendo there. So I have repeat on right now. The rate is 1 16th. We have a length of nine. Let's change that to two. So now we're getting two hits. Again, this is per drum. So I go to another sample, another sample. All right, you can have it on for some and off for others, right? So I could change this to, let's take this to perhaps a four and one eighth. Very cool. Then I can turn on loop. I'm just holding down just one key, getting a nice sort of a double kick drum sound there. Let's speed that up. Take it up to like a blast beat here. Very cool. Now, if I were to draw in each individual MIDI note for that sort of blast beat, that really fast double kick, I mean, that's going to be for an entire track. It's going to be hundreds upon hundreds of little tiny MIDI notes right all through the uh, all through the track. But here I can do it just holding down one key. All right. Now we also have other options like our accent. Have that be up or down. The amount of that accent or just turn it off. Turn this back on. Put this on mod. And adjust it uh, however you want. Then you have some random things for your time and your velocity. Let me slow this down just a bit. Pull that time and velocity way up there. So now we're getting some randomizations. That's way too much, of course, but if you want a bit of more of a, a human feel, randomize your time and velocity just a bit. Very cool. Change that to maybe down. A little less than the amount. Very cool. You'll also see things like copy and paste all throughout this interface. And that's just a way for you to really save time whenever you want the same settings on uh, some different samples. So maybe I want those same settings on this sample here. No problem. Copy them here. Trigger that uh, sample. Paste them right in there. Boom. You have your left and uh, your right pedal, but it's not just repeats that you have here. We also have things like rolls. Let's go to a, uh, a snare. Very cool. Go to a roll. Sit on velocity right now. So play it soft, play it hard, have your rate. Mod wheel. Of course, your same uh, time and velocity randomization. You have flams here. Swells. For the swells, let's go to a, a symbol. That works. Let's change the rate and the amount there. And the overall length. Crescendo. Very cool. So that performance section can really come in handy whenever you're you know trying to score whatever uh whatever your project happens to be. So instead of having to go in there and, you know, do a bunch of things like that for a crescendo or a repeat, we can just set it up here, play a single note and all of that is done for you. So I could even, let's get a, very cool, let's do this here. On the snare, just to show something like a blast beat, right? Go to loop on that. We'll set this to 1 16th. We'll have our 
kick on 132nd. Very cool. All right, nice blast beat holding down just uh, two keys. Again, that would take a very long time to program if I had to program in each and every one of those individual hits. All right, let's move on to the master effects page. This is pretty self-explanatory here, pretty simple. So we have our punish knob, if you know anything about damage, or even a lot of the uh, heaviosity products, they include the uh, punish knob in there, which is kind of like a uh, compression and some saturation, maybe some harmonic excitement. We have three different modes for that. Go to Nightmare, really crush it. All right, you can get some really cool sounds out of that. You have your response, which is like the release for the uh, compression, the tone. Do you want a uh, high-end sheen on that or reduce that there? Let me pull this up a bit here. All right, hear that? A bit more high-end on that. Of course, dial it in to taste, turn it on, turn it off right there. Then we have six different effects. Just click on the effects to dive in there and adjust the... Uh, all of the uh, different parameters. You can turn them on or off by clicking the buttons right above them. You can also move them around in the chain. Just click, hold, and drag. Put them wherever you want. All right, again, turn them on, turn them off. Adjust them. And uh, again, set up your uh, perfect tone for, again, this is the master effect. So anything we do back here will affect every single sample. All right, whether it's a tom, a cymbal, kick or a snare. All right. So that's your master effects page right there. All right. So that is everything here in our drum ensemble designer. Of course, don't forget that you have a bunch of uh, different presets up here that you can quickly load up. So full selection of toms, for example, right there. Great sounds in this kit. All right, so let's move on to our drum kit designer. All right, so here we are in the drum kit designer of the damage drum kit. And these are laid out kind of like a MPC drum kit. We have 16 different pads and 16 different samples. Very cool. So across the top, pretty uh, simple to figure out, right? You have your mixer for each of your different drums. You have solos and mutes. You can use the arrow to go to the next uh, you know, next bank. If you have your MIDI follow turned on, it will switch for you as you as you play up and down the, uh, the keyboard. And right here, you have your pan controls. Control click, command click on Mac to uh, center that out. You can see the note that's triggering everything. Of course, that corresponds to your pads down here as well. And then you'll see this main underneath. And this is where you can route your sounds out, route your drums out to individual tracks in your DAW. If you happen to want to use, you know, your own effects on each individual drum. Okay. So I'm not going to go through how to set this up exactly, but in general, uh, because it varies by DAW, but in general, you'll need to come up to your outputs here in contact. Make sure you set up however many outputs that you want to use. And once you do that, then you will be able to come over to your main and choose any of the available outputs. So let's pull this back up again. If I take my, uh, so everything right now, of course, is coming out of one and two. So let's put our kick maybe coming out of two. We can't hear it now because again, you have to have a track in your DAW, right? So in studio one, it's really easy to set this up. I can just select that track right there. Come over here to the mixer. You can actually see that track right here. So now we can actually hear it, right? Very good. If I wanted to route my snare out right here, put that out on three. Again, I can't hear it yet. I need to make sure I add that track first. Boom, right there it is now. Now I can hear it. So then again, I could come in here to my effects and drag and drop whatever effects I want 
on these individual drums and mix them like that. All right, but let's go back to putting everything out of the mains. Very good. Over here, you can see the sample that is loaded for each slot whenever you uh, click it, or of course, if you have that MIDI follow turned on, whenever you trigger something. You also have four different effects that you can load up, again, per sample. So maybe on this uh, snare here, the snare one right hand, again, we can add some compression in there or use this drop down and maybe change it to an overdrive, some drive on that, come to the, uh, put some extra sustain on that, that transient shaper, head in there to the EQ, set things up, you know, now, if I like this setup here, then I have another snare sample right there, right? Once again, we have a copy and a paste, so I can copy this one, head over to this sample, paste it in. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go, folks. All right. So that's pretty much the uh, mix page. Let's head over to the source page. So over here, just like in the drum ensemble designer, we can drag and drop different samples right onto, in this case, our uh, our pads. So if I come up to the kick category, again, same things over here. If you really like something, you can favorite it and head over to your favorites and find it. You can filter in here. So kick one, kick two, just your favorites, et cetera, et cetera. Put that back to all. So on one, you can see that the kick one is uh, in that slot. If I click this slot, again, it shows me the sample. Click the sample to hear it. Again, as long as auto is turned on, you can even see a description of the drum right down there. So I wanted to uh, change this out to that sample. Click, drag. That's all there is to it. All right. I want some reverses in there instead of having um, a flam in there. Maybe I want this reverse. Or maybe a tom reverse. Pop that in there. Again, you have your mixer down here. This is just a uh, a mirror of everything going on right there. All right, so again, if I take our C1, which is uh, our kick, I turn that down. Over here under mix, you're gonna see that reflected, all right? Let's move on to the settings page. So over here, we can actually see the samples right there. Again, as long as I have MIDI follow turned on. If you're trying to dial in, uh, maybe you're playing a MIDI pattern or something in your DAW and you really wanna focus on a certain uh, a certain sample, you can turn off that MIDI follow so it's not going to be updated. And then you can just focus on you know the settings for that uh, particular drum. Turn this back on. All right, so we can see our sample right there. I can change the start of that to wherever, wherever I want. Doesn't make much sense to have it down here in this case, but you can do that if you want. Again, adjust the uh, level right here, solos and mutes. You can even route things on this page, tune things up, velocity, sensitivity, again, low velocity, high velocity, turn that down, high velocity, high velocity, all right. There we go, let's put that up there. Then you have your uh, attack, decay, and release. You go to something like a snare, attack it slower, doesn't make sense here, uh, but maybe a faster decay goes off faster, maybe a faster release. Just whatever you want. Again, total control of the sound of each drum, all right? So that is per drum here. Change all this stuff up for everything here. I can change the close mic, the overhead, the room, the hall, and the crush mic. And this is going to be per sample. So if I wanted my kick drum to be a lot of close mic, not much of the room, not much of the hall, maybe a bit of the crush there, not too much in the overheads. Okay. Then over to the snare, I can have no close mic and just have this be like all room mic or something. Then over to the toms, again, set this up however you want. Full control on a per sample basis. Let's come back here. Control click these things. Command click on Mac. Set them to the uh, defaults there. 
full control of each of your samples. Then you'll see this MIDI note and the, uh, the last note that you touched, as long as, again, MIDI follow is turned on. Otherwise, you can click any of your pads that will update over here. You have your round robin controls. We already know what those are. You can use your choke controls to uh, choke things off. So for example, let's find, uh, there we go. So here's a hi-hat with choke already turned on, then a tom where choke is not turned on. So let's turn on choke on that tom. Then whenever I play this hi-hat, as soon as I play this other note, which in this case is the tom, it chokes off that previous note. Same thing for the hi-hat in this case. Cuts off that tom. So that's something that in general you might want to use with uh, your cymbals, but you can use them with anything that you want. All right, that's your choke. And then we can change the note that that sample is assigned to um, up here. We can either click and we can double click and enter whatever you want, or just click to change this around. You'll see it move down here. Let's go to this um, kick here. So the kick is on C1, right? If I change that, look down here on the keyboard, you can see it's moving exactly where that it's mapped to. So now it's mapped away down here. So if you have some MIDI that you're, you know, MIDI files that you're pulling in, or you like to play a certain way, whatever, you can uh, use your key map here. Essentially, this is like a key map to map your samples, map your slots, however you want. All right, you can also use that MIDI learn. So again, let's go to, well, let's go to a snare, I guess. Go to the snare, I'll go to learn, and then I'll hit a different key. It can be anywhere on my keyboard, so I'll just click one way down here. So now that note is assigned way down here. You can see it changed to C0 here, C0 here. All right, of course I can always put that back where it was. All right, so then you'll see your effects section, and that's, again, just a copy of what we saw over here in the uh, in the mix section. So again, if I have compression, transient, EQ, all turned on over here, come over to settings, you can see that's reflected over here. All right, so it's just a copy um, of those same settings. All right, so you can adjust them from either place. All right, move on to the master effects, and we don't really need to go into this at all because it's the same thing that we saw in the uh, drum ensemble designer, right? Same same controls, tone, punish, turn on that nightmare. Some really great sounds with that uh, punish there. Same stuff here with your effects, click and drag in the chain, turn them on, turn them off, click on them, and adjust the individual settings. And of course, just like all of the other instruments, uh, uh, damage drum instruments. We have plenty of presets right up here. Again, what they call snapshots here in contact. Just make sure that camera icon is showing. Use your drop down. You have damage presets and organic sounding presets. Load them up. It will load up a, you know, a whole chain of settings, a whole chain of samples in here. It's the arrow there. Do the damage. Very cool. All right, so let's move on to the drum loop designer. All right, this is the drum loop designer. Of course, as the name implies, we're playing a bunch of different loops and we can trigger them all at the same time if you want, or of course, trigger them individually, but we can trigger them all at the same time by using our designer keys. So I'm just holding down a single key here and we're getting three different loops being played. A low loop, a middle loop. We can of course see the name up here, by the way and a high loop all at the same time. Of course, we have several different kinds of uh, combinations. I could even play multiple keys at the same time. You can play the individual loops. 
also from our three different banks here. This is the uh, the low bank. Come to the middle bank here. Just the middle loop. Maybe just a high loop, maybe. And for each of our loops, we have control for the volume, the pan, the tune, the speed, and the send amount for the uh, send effects uh, over here. So of course, if you want that lower, turn it down, turn it up so it balances out with the other loops that you might be playing at the same time. Pan it around. All right, control click. Again, tune it up, tune it down, maybe, maybe a bit lower there. It's kind of cool. Again, this is per loop, so I can have completely different settings for this loop here, for this loop here, whatever you want. We have a speed setting, so we can do that maybe half time. This really comes uh, into play whenever you're layering it with your other loops, right? So let's uh, let's go down to our designer key here, which we can see I'm down here on the keyboard. You can see designer keys right there and our different loop banks. So there's our bank one, bank two, bank three, then our transition bank right over here. We also have some stutter effects, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's play a, that's cool. So we tune this one down. Let's tune it back up. But now we'll speed this one up. All right? Doesn't really work for the other loops that are playing along with it. Maybe speed that one, uh, slow that one down. So this is a really quick and easy way to stack your loops on top of each other and still manipulate them with you know time, tuning, volume, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. You can make that one play faster. Again, you can trigger these individually. So have a mid loop playing there. A high end loop there. Play them individually or again, use your designer keys. Now, by default, whenever I play this low C note, you can see that it's triggering all of the loops that are in the C note in our, uh, on our different banks, but we can actually customize this as well. So on this low end, I kind of like that loop. But maybe up here, maybe I don't like this. Maybe I don't like that. Maybe I like that instead. There we go, I like that there. So I'm gonna select, with this note selected down here, I'll just select that note right there. So now whenever I play that C note, it's gonna trigger the C note here in this bank. Then it's gonna trigger the loop that I just selected. And still playing the uh, C4 note in the, the upper bank there. But we can customize this too, maybe change it to uh, that. Again, customize things like speed and volume. We can also customize the start and the looping section of each of our, um, let me go to this here, of each of our samples. So we can drag this up and it will start from right here. Choose the endpoint. Now this section here is the uh, looping section. So maybe I wanna start the loop way out here, but I just want it to loop this part right there. Play that, it'll start up here. It's gonna come down to this section here and then loop right here. Then we'll just continue to loop until I, of course, release the key. And again, this is per sample or per loop, okay? You can get a lot of different uh, 
sounds. Let's move on to our stutter uh, keys real quick. Let's just play one of our designer keys. Let me customize this one up a bit. It's kind of cool. And then use our stutter keys here. And everything stays in time. You can also change that to a triplet if you don't want it on straight. Then we have transitions up here. Let me actually come up here and load a different snapshot real quick. Very cool. Then we'll trigger a, a, a transition. You can layer things up however you want. You could hold a designer key and then play some additional keys up here at the same time, play a couple designer keys at the same time. You can mix and match your loops really however you want. A lot of stuff you can do in here. It's a great way to get an idea or if you just need something done quick, you know, you can probably find something that uh, will fit your project within uh, all the loops that are included here. All right. So let's move on to the source page. This is going to be pretty familiar because we've already seen it in the uh, previous two uh, NKIs. So same thing here. We got bank and then we got uh, got loop. Also have uh, if you're on the loop, you also have filters over here. Select your banks or use the arrows. You can come down to your transition bank down uh, down here. Same stuff. Click on it. You're going to hear it as long as auto is turned on. You have different categories: damage, straight. You got triplet loops, like a hybrid, organic, and your transitions, and of course your favorites. If you find something that you like, just of course, click on that favorite. So again, load things up wherever you want. I want this one right here. Currently, this loop is loaded, but maybe I want uh, this on there. Very good. Put that right there, no problem. Head up here. Maybe I don't like that, no problem. Load this up, load that up. And again, customize your banks however you want. Or we can come over to bank and load the entire bank, you know, all of the slots at the same time. So let's play uh, this here. Maybe I want the hybrid, or let's go to organic straight high end, the mid or the low, or even the full loop. I could do a full loop into this bank. So that's bank one. So that's the entire, that's all three stems, the mid, the high and the low, all together in these uh, banks. All right. Or maybe just the, uh, the low end loops. Then come up to your second bank. I could do the middle loops uh, there. Or I could mix and match. Maybe I want the organic lows on the first bank. And then for the second bank, I want the, maybe the damaged mids, right? Mix and match the stuff up and get some really cool sounds. And then the high end will have hybrid. There we go. Now we're all mixed up here. course customize what plays whenever I trigger that key very cool speed it up nope doesn't work for that one maybe this one speed that one up it's kind of cool you can really play around with the drum loop designer for, you know, 
hours and hours and hours just trying all kinds of different combinations. All right, so that is your source page. Let's move on to the send effects. Now, again, you probably remember uh, this send knob. Again, this is a per loop setting, all right? So if you want something sent or you want more of it sent to the send effects, you can adjust that here. If you want less of it sent, you can turn it down uh, there as well. Turn the send way up there. Let's come over to our send effects. Let me hide that for now. Turn this up. Of course, make sure they're turned on. Now we can hear those send effects on that uh, loop, right? Again, just like the other effects, you can turn them on, turn them off right here. Those little uh, orange lights or turn them all off right there. Click on them to adjust the settings for each individual effect or switch out the effects. Uh, we have timbral effects over here and spatial effects over here. Drag and drop, you know, replace them. as a filter on there instead. The total amount right here. Let's change this back to a distortion. Have that delay on there is pretty cool. But when I play the next sample or the next loop, not quite as much as being sent. I can even pull it down further. So now this loop isn't being sent over to the send effects basically at all because we have it at uh, minus 120 dB. So this is a low end loop. I may not want a lot of send on that, right? But I may. I may want to send more of that high end. That's pretty cool. Maybe in this mid range, send more, send less. Again, folks, full customization of everything in here. It makes it really easy to set up complex sounding tracks in you know, just a few minutes. We also have modulation for the um, effects amount. So we'll open up the uh, the modulation controls, make sure we turn them on. Then you have things like your the overall range. You'll see this orange line there. So you want a higher range or a lower range. You want one direction to the other direction. You'll see what I mean here in just a uh, second. So we'll just go with this shape for now, I guess. We'll have it on straight. 16 steps is fine. Performance is legato. That's fine. Rate is 1 8th. See this line continue. Now to really hear this, I should probably come over here. Let's just play a single. Here we go. I'll do more of a send on that. So we can really hear this. Now I'll pull the range way up here. Then I'll pull our uh, overall control all the way down. So that's gonna span the entire width of being off to being on. All right, more intense up here off over here it's following along with this shape of course we can have different kind of shape in there change the range if you want so not staying within a certain area that's going from basically turning off the amount to just getting a you know about a quarter or so of the amount in there Change the steps up here if you want, and even the uh, the rate if you want to go faster or slower. Let's go to a times two. Of course, draw in a shape if you want. All right.
Then we have the master effects page again, same thing that we already saw in the other two interfaces. Three different types. And then your master effects down here again, master effects affect everything. So it's, they're going to affect every single, uh, every single loop. Again, click on them, adjust them however you want. Turn them on, turn them off. Move them around in your chain. Very cool. Build up your track very quickly by using the drum loop designer. Once again, you have plenty of snapshots up here to uh, to go through. Let's grab a triplet there. Hit one of our designer keys. Customize things however you want. You can also change the tempo in my DAW. So if I turn that down to 80, of course, everything's going to scale. Then we'll put it on, say, 180. All right, it all scales. Let's put this on uh, 100. There we go. Forget that you can customize what's playing on each designer key. Right, so that is everything that you need to know about each of our different interfaces here in Damage Drum Kit, every parameter, how they work, what effect, you know, does each knob have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so now that we know how to actually use this really cool and epic sounding cinematic drum kit, let's get back to the really good stuff and hear some more samples.
All right, so that is a damage drum kit from Heaviosity. If you want to check it out further, head right over here. You can check it out on the official site. They have some more videos here, some more samples here. Dig in there if you want. Go over to the content overview. Check out a few, uh, few more tracks in there. Check out some more specifics of this drum kit. All right. You can also buy it over here if you want, or you can head over to Best Surface and pick it up over here, or even pick it up at Plugin Boutique. All right, we'll have links for all of these in the description below. All right, so head over there and pick up Damage Drum Kit for yourself and get epic.